Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcher Easter here on YouTube, and today is the bonus video that I promised you guys. So it is still Friday, March 18th. Bill is at his poker game. It is about 5:45. Um, they wound up leaving an hour later than they thought. I decide to spare you guys me eating on camera. So I've already had the sushi, which was delicioso. But um, we are drinking Angry Orchard Crisp Apple. I like them in a can. I could buy it in a 12-pack. So, very good. So, I'm here to help you, women, men, find a husband. 129 ways to get a husband, according to McCall's in 1958. All right, so apparently they are broken up into categories. <laughs> today has been a day. Like, we have been quite busy here today. Um, Bill, I helped him, before I get into this, I helped him clean up his station. Um, he worked on the boat. He was sewing a windshield. Yeah. Yeah. And so he spent literally almost all day doing that. And he had to go, they needed him to pick up chips and dip and beer. So I wound up going out and doing that for him. And then doing, I did a few little things with work, did the video, checked mail, laundry, all that kind of stuff. It ate up the day for sure. So after I do this video, I'm going to stitch the rest of the evening and I think I'm going to watch Squid Game. My stepdaughter keeps telling me to watch it. I've watched part of the first episode, so. Okay, anyway. The first category of how to find a man or how to find a husband is where to find him. Okay. Get your pen, get your paper. <laughs> so number one says, get a dog and walk it. Okay, that's probably not a bad idea. You know, some of these are going to be things that you would do in normal everyday life anyway. Number two says, have your car break down at strategic places. What? I feel like I'm going to be saying what a lot. Number three, attend night school. Take courses that men like. Like what? Auto? Auto shop? Now, I do have to say, when I was in high school, a senior, the only really academic class that I needed was English. You had to have four years of English. And so I took a lot of electives. One of those electives was woodworking. I was one of two girls in the class. So I had a lot of attention from the guys. Yeah. Um, number four, join a hiking club. Yeah. Number five, look in this. Jesus Christ. Look in the census reports for places with the most single men. Nevada. Now this is up in 1958. Nevada has 125 males for every 100 females. Survival of the fittest. Supply and demand. <laughs> Read the, number six, read the obituaries to find eligible widowers. No, do not do that. Uh-uh. Oh, that's an awful one. No. Number seven, take up golf and go to different golf courses. This, these make my head hurt. Take up golf if you fucking like golf. Are you kidding me right now? Number eight. Take several short vacations at different places rather than one long one at one place. I can't believe there's 129 of these. Number nine, sit on a park bench and feed the pigeons. Again, if you like doing that. I remember a Sex in the City episode where Carrie was in the park and she met a guy right there on the bench. Yeah. Number 10, take a bicycle trip through Europe. What? Number 11, get a job in a medical, dental, or law school. 
What the actual hell? <laughs> Number 12, become a nurse or an airline stewardess. They have very high marriage rates. Do they now? Okay. Number 13, ask your friend's husbands who the eligible men are in their offices. That's not a bad one. If you don't mind getting set up. I remember when I was single before I got with Bill. My dad was trying to set me up with people that he knew. And I said, dad, no offense. I'm not dating someone your age. At that point, I was 35 and my dad was 52. My dad's only 17. My dad, um, he was 18 when I was, no, he was seven. How old is he? He just turned 66. I'm going to be 48. He wasn't 22. No. Yeah, he was 18. I, I'm doing the math wrong. He was 18 when I was born. So, no, Daddy, I'm not dating men that are 53 years old when I'm 35. No. But that's just me. Okay, number 14. Be nice to everybody. They may have an eligible brother or son. Good point. That one is valid. Number 15, get a government job overseas. What? Number 16, volunteer for jury duty? Fuck you. No. No, 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 no. No. Now, here's one that I read to my dad. And my dad made a good point. <laughs> Number 17 says, be friendly to ugly men. It says, handsome is as handsome does. And yes, there is somebody out there for everybody. And when you love someone, I feel like they are more attractive to you. However, when I said to my dad about be friendly to ugly men, he said, yeah, because they may have hotter friends. And I was like, ooh, burn. Like, that's a good one. <laughs> number 18 tell your friends that you were interested in getting married don't keep it a secret jesus christ i'm guessing in 1958 if you wanted to get married you probably told everybody number 19 get lost at football games another one why do we have to seem like we are weak in order to attract a man? Now, number 20, don't take a job in a company run largely by women. Okay. Here's a good one. Number 21, get a job demonstrating fishing tackle in a sporting goods store. <laughs> I don't even really know what to say to that. God help. I can't imagine having that job. What? Number 22, on a plane, train, or bus, don't sit next to a woman, sit next to a man. You can meet men. I mean, I met my first husband uh, on a bowling league. I met the guy I was supposed to marry before my husband, also at the bowling alley. It seemed to be the trend. You know, uh, my first husband, we saw each other in passing, and this one week we bowled next to one another. So he started talking to me, and he asked me out on a date. And there we go. And then two years later, we were married. But you see how that went. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Number 23, go to all reunions of your high school or college class. There may be widowers there. I'm going to be honest here. I have no desire to go to my high school. I haven't gone to one reunion. This year is 30 years since I've been in high school. 
and they are actually having like a little get together at a bar in August. And I'm just like, Ugh. these people didn't want to give me the time of day in high school. So why the hell do they want to talk to me now? All right. Number 24. Don't be afraid to associate with more attractive girls. They may have some leftovers. That's what we want, ladies. We want sloppy seconds, right? Jesus, what the hell are we saying here? Number 25, <laughs> go back to your hometown for a visit. The wild kid next door may have become a very eligible bachelor while you were away. Or go on Match.com 20 years after high school and you may meet someone who lived across the street from you, like I did with Bill. <laughs> Number 26, don't room with a girl who is a sad sack and let her pull you down to her level. Wow, these are, wow. Number 27, get a part-time job in a convention bureau. What the hell is a convention bureau? Like politics? Number 28, change apartments from time to time. Do you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to move? No. Number 29, when traveling, stay at small hostels where it is easier to meet strangers. Have you fucking seen the movie Hostel? Okay, there is a three-part movie. Hostel 1, 2, and 3. They are horror movies. I love them. They are so, so good. But Jesus Christ, no. Do not stay in a hostel. No. God, no. If you've seen that movie, leave me a comment down below. Good night. Number 30, learn to paint. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like loopy by the end of this. Learn to paint. Set up an easel outside of an engineering school. Get the hell out of here. What? No. All right. The next category is how to let him know you're there. Oh, Lordy. This should be good. Number 31. Stumble when you walk into a room that he's in. Because a man wants someone that's drunk. Or looks like they're... What? No. No. Do not stumble. What? So he has to catch you? Again, women. We do not have to be the weaker sex to get a man's attention. But I'm guessing in 1958 you did. Number 32. Forget discretion every once in a while and call him up. Now that one I agree with. That one I agree with. It's probably the only one I'm going to agree with. Number 33. Carry a hat box. What the fuck? What? Now, I realize that hats in 1958 were probably much more popular than they are now. But what's the purpose of care? So he could then carry it for you? <laughs> I'm going to try this out. I am going to try. The you know what? I'm going to do it before Bill comes home. He will say this. Okay. Number 34 says, wear a Band-Aid. People always ask what happened. Where are you supposed to wear this Band-Aid? I'm guessing if you wore it on your forehead, somebody would be asking you what. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That's hilarious. Wear a Band-Aid. Number 35, make a lot of money. Women. Do that because you want to make money for yourself. What the? Number 36. Learn several funny stories and learn to tell them well. But make sure you don't tell them to him more than once. I need to save this article. Okay, so Easter this year is Bill's birthday. And some years it his birthday falls on Easter. We always go to my dad's for Easter dinner. I asked Bill, do you mind if we still go? Because if I tell my dad it's Bill's birthday, they'll have a cake. They'll do all that. And uh, I need to read these to my dad. He would just die laughing. Okay, number 37. Walk up to him and tell him you need some advice. On what? Number 38. Dropping the handkerchief still works. 
that probably does still work. But you know what? When literally, because you know, Bill and I always like kid around and, and do stuff to each other. If I, if he's sitting down in the chair and I walk by and I have something in my hand, he tries to hit it out of my hand. He does it all the time. Um, some, and I've grown to expect it. So I usually have like a visor grip on the item. Okay. Number 39, have your father buy some theater tickets that have to be gotten rid of. Okay. Number 40, stand in a corner and cry softly. The fuck? Chances are good that he'll come over to find out what's wrong. And then what are you going to say? I don't have a man. That's what's wrong. Jesus Christ. No. Number 41. Don't let him fish for your name the next time you meet. None of this guess who stuff. Ladies and men. All right. Number 42. If you're at a resort, have the bellboy paid you. Because? What? Number 43 says buy a convertible. Men like to ride in them. <laughs> Some of these I don't even know what to say. Number 44, learn how to bake tasty apple pies. Bring one into the office and let the eligible bachelors taste it. Now, I am not a cook. I don't had, I didn't make the, any pretense that I was. However, in my opinion, the way to a man is sex and food. Mm -hmm. And letting him do his hobbies. Yeah. I mean, sex and food. And I said that to Bill before and he was like, oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Even if I got to buy the baked goods. Like I made those Godiva cookies. I didn't bake them. I mean, they were already like pre-made. I'll just pop them in the oven. He was really surprised when I made those the other day. Okay, number 45 says, laugh at his jokes. If they're funny. Like, a, a sense of humor is very important. Like, that's one of the... Bill always makes me laugh every single day. Number 46, if there's a wallflower among the men you know, why not cultivate him? For all you know, he may be a diamond in the rough. Could be a point there. Oh, Lordy. 47, accidentally, and accidentally is in quotes, have your purse fly open, scattering its contents all over the street. But make sure you don't have a diaphragm or birth control or a tampon in there. Yeah. All right. How to look good to him is the next category. Good God. This video is not going to be that long. I'm not already at number 48. Men like to think they're authorities on perfume. They do. Ask his advice on what kind you should wear. My favorite perfume as of late is Versace. Bill got me Versace Bright Crystal for Christmas and it smells really good. Um, but actually, I got in the mail today Bath and Body Works Watermelon Lemonade Body Spray. Oh my God, I'm going to smell like a piece of candy. Mm-hmm. All right, number 49 says, get better looking glasses. Men still make passes at girls who wear glasses or try contact lenses. Excuse me? 50. <laughs> Practice your drinking with your women friends first. Yeah, be, care be careful with alcohol on a date. Have you ever seen The Bachelor? There is always someone who drinks way too much on the first night and they get kicked off. And it's just, it's not a good look. Number 51, if you dye your hair, pick a shade and stick to it. Okay. I mean, okay. I mean, you can, you should be able to express yourself, right? Ah, number 52, wear high heels most of the time. They're sexier. Tell my feet that. Yeah. Uh, 53, unless he happens to be shorter than you are. <laughs> so you don't want to tower over your man is what they're saying. 
Number 54, tell him he's handsome. Now, I do agree with that, and I agree with that in the sense that, excuse me, compliment your man just like he should be complimenting you. It's so easy to just, I think it's really easy to take your spouse. Now, this is, you're trying to get a husband, but I'll give you some advice on keeping one too, if you don't mind. Um, I try to tell Bill once a day something really, really nice. You know, I like your shirt or, you know, something, something. And we tell each other a whole bunch during the day that we love each other all the time. He's always telling me that. Okay, number 55, take good care of your health. Men don't like girls who are ill. What? I agree that taking good care of your health is, is important. Men don't like girls who are ill. Well, some illnesses can't be helped, McCall's. <laughs> Number 56, if you look good in sweaters, wear one on every third date. What the actual fucking fashion sense is that? Only on one on every third date? <laughs> Number 57, I looked ahead at number 58. I don't fucking get what that one means. Number 57, dress differently from the other girls in the office. How so? So if they dress like hookers, you're supposed to dress dem demurely, demurely. Get out of here. All right, number 58, get a sunburn. What? What does that have to do with getting a man? Why would I? Now, what's the category? How to look good to him. Get a sunburn is looking good? No, it's not. A sunburn is not a good look, especially when you start peeling or you blister. I've had really bad sunburns in my life. They're not fun for anyone. Number 59 says, watch your vocabulary. Do they mean watch your fucking language? Or should you know like big words? Number 60, go on a diet if you need to. Fuck you, number 60. What? No. That one I take offense to most of all. I feel like I'm always trying to lose weight. I'm always trying to... No, I'm telling you, if you are your, if you are genuine and you are yourself, you will find your person. It may take a while. Number 61, when you were with him, order your steak rare. Why? Okay, any of these I have a question on. If you know what they're talking about, please leave it in the comments below. What does that even mean? Order your steak rare? So it doesn't take a long time to cook in a kitchen? I'm so clueless on that. All right, number 62, don't tell him about your allergies. No, instead, you know, when it comes springtime like it is now and your eyes are itching and you're sneezing, that's okay, but don't tell him. My good God. Number 63, European women use their eyes to good advantage. Practice in front of a mirror. <laughs> Dude, what? I would probably look like I had something wrong with me if I'm practicing. Now, see, when I'm talking and you say something that catches my eye, like my, I, I, I like my eyebrow will raise. I can't sit here and like raise it, but it will raise like on its own, just one, and it's like an involuntary reflex almost. Yeah, Jesus fucking Christ. 64, buy a full-length mirror and take a good look before you go to greet him. Now, I don't think I would have worded it like that, but it can't help to look in the mirror before you leave the house. Here's a good example, and this is being completely transparent. So I had for lunch a empanada. If you don't know what empanada is, it is a pastry with ground beef in the middle. It is, um, you know, a Mexican dish. We got a box of them at Costco and they're, they're not too big. Like I just had one. 
Well, it was a little bit spicy, so my nose was running. So I blew my nose after I ate. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the grocery store and get your chips and dip for the poker game. When I went down to give him a kiss, he's like, you have a booger hanging out of your nose. I'm like, I do. And he just like picked it. It was like dried, but he just like picked it out. And I was like, well, that's true love right there. When you're, when your husband is going to pick a booger from the edge of your nose, I would have been so embarrassed going out in public. That's why I said, look in the mirror before you walk out of the house. Okay. Number 65, change the shade of your stockings and be sure to keep the seams straight. Wow, this is really dating this article where you wore stockings that had seams up the back. Number 66, get that fresh scrubbed look by scrubbing. Well, yeah, wash your face. I mean, I get that, but... Number 67, if he has bought you any trinket or accessory, wear it. Okay. I agree with wearing jewelry and stuff. Like, Bill loves that the fact that I love this watch, this Samsung watch he got me for Valentine's Day. Number 68, use the ashtray. Don't crush out cigarettes in coffee cups or on your plate. Um, most people don't smoke nowadays. Smoking has gone out of style. And, you know, when I was a kid, my brother and I had to do the dinner dishes every night, and my stepfather would put out his cigarette on the dinner plate. Class, class all the way right there. Number 69, polish up on making introductions. Learn to do them gracefully. That's probably a skill we should all have. I agree with that one. Not in how to keep a man, but just in etiquette. Number 70, don't be too fussy. Fuck you. It's like saying, don't be too much. Don't be too fussy. Yeah, get the hell out of here. Number 71, stick to your moral standards. I do agree with that. Stick to your morals. Stick to, you know, don't let, I guess, maybe like don't succumb to peer pressure, I guess. Number 72, don't whine. Girls who whine stay on the vine. Good fucking night. All right, how to land him is the next category. This should be good. Show number 73, show him you can have fun on a cheap date, but don't overdo it. Well, and they're saying that because then he won't take you out on any expense, more expensive dates. Number 74, don't let your parents treat him like a potential husband. What does that even mean? How do, how do you treat someone like a potential husband? Number 75, ask your parents to disappear when you're entertaining. See, my eyebrow went up when I read that. <laughs> okay. Number 76, double date with a gay, happily married couple. Let him see what it's like. I don't think this meant gay as in homosexual. They meant gay as in happy. The definition of it? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, let him see what it's like to be double dating with a married couple. All right. That could go horribly wrong, however. Number 77, tell his friends nice things about him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number 78, send his mother a birthday card. Now, that is a good one. I have to say I agree with that one. Mm -hmm. Number 79, ask his mother for her recipes. <laughs> ah, I like that one. No. Um... I don't know, you know, Bill's mom was only alive for the first seven, she passed away seven weeks after we started dating and she was recovering from neck surgery when she passed away. So, uh, didn't really get to see her like in normal everyday life. I don't know what she would have thought about me not like cooking and Bill cooking dinner every night. I don't know. See, I never had that dynamic. Um, yeah. Number 80, talk to his father about business and agree that taxes are too high. Get out of here. Now, I do have to say, you know, every Tuesday, my stepdaughter and her boyfriend come over and they've been dating for a few years now. And I don't know her boyfriend. I mean, too, too well, 
but I do know his job and that he likes, he collects guns. And so I'll ask him how work. I try to engage in conversation with things that I know he's interested in. You know what I mean? All right. Number 81, buy his sister's children an occasional present. What if he doesn't have a sister or she doesn't have kids? The hell? Number 82. Now this is bold face lying though. On the first date, tell him you aren't thinking of getting married. What? No. 83. Don't talk about how many children you want. <laughs> Number 84. If he's a fisherman, learn to scale and clean fish. Now, I have a different opinion about Bill's hobbies. His second wife went fishing with him, went on the boat, liked to fish, all of that. I feel like that when you're married or your boyfriend and girlfriend, you need to have something that has nothing to do with your partner. So cross-stitching, my crafts, he may help me with some things when I need help, but it's not something that he does with me. Fishing is his thing. I'm interested in hearing about it. I'll listen to him talk about it. I know fishing terms. I know some stuff, but I have no desire to do it. Now, I have gone fishing with him two different times. So once in a great, great while, like we walk to the end of the street because we have a beach at the end of our street, that's different. I feel like him going on the boat all summer long, that's a guy thing. Go have guy time. Go do that. I don't need to be any part of that. Number 85, don't tell him everything about yourself at the start. Hold something in reserve. I kind of agree with that too. Like you don't want to give all of it away yet, right? Not in the beginning. Number 86, when you're out strolling with him, don't insist on stopping at every shop window. <laughs> Oh my God. Number 87, don't tell him how much your clothes cost. Okay. Number 88, oh, here's a good one. Learn to sew, right? Learn to sew and wear something you have made yourself. You don't want to see anything I make on a sewing machine. Number 89, don't gossip about him. Ooh, it's tempting though to your friends, right? Number 90, Never let him know he's the only one, even if you have to stay home one or two nights a week. This sounds like that book, The Rules. Do you guys remember that? Now, I do agree with that to a certain extent where you maybe you don't want to seem too available. I don't know. When I started dating Bill, we were, I was with him like every day very soon after. It didn't take very long. And it depends on your age, I think. Like, you know, I was 35. He was 36. It's like when you get to be in the upper ages, you don't have time for no damn games. All right. Number 91, don't be a pushover when he's trying to make a date. Okay. Number 92, very early in your dating, why not get a favorite song that you both regard as your own? So when Bill and I got married, it wasn't like a traditional wedding where you pick out a wedding song. We got married in front of this fountain at the tree houses in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. But there is this song, and I think it's by Sugarland. It's like stuck on you where it says, what oh, what oh, stuck on you. We, I don't know why we picked that song. I mean, it is kind of a love song. That's our song. That's the song we always, and I never hear it anymore. I need to actually find it and like play it for him again. All right, number 93, find out about the girls he hasn't married. Don't repeat the mistakes they made. Alrighty. Number 94, don't discuss your former boyfriends. I have to say, Tread lightly when you discuss previous marriages, exes, all that. I don't think your current person wants to constantly be compared to your previous person. Number 95, if you are widowed or divorced, don't constantly discuss your former husband. Yeah, I, I, that makes sense. 
Number 96, be flexible. And I agree with this one. I do agree with this one. If he decides to skip the dance and go rowing on the lake, go. Even if you are wearing your best evening gown. And I think, you know, being flexible means being open. I, I get it. Being open to different things, different opportunities. I completely understand that. Number 97, hide your Phi Beta Kappa key if you own one. Later on, Junior can play with it. What the fuck does that mean? Later on, he can play with it? What? Now, I was not in a sorority. My stepdaughter was when she went to UMBC. I don't know what the hell... If you know what that means, why would he want to play with the key? Is that a euphemism for something? Let me know down below. All right, number 98 turn wolves into husband material by assuming they have honor. Number 99, resist the urge to make him over before marriage, that is, and after marriage. I have told my stepdaughter this. If I can give you any piece of advice, do not try to change a man. Do not marry him thinking you're going to change him. Take him as he presents himself to you or don't take him. Like don't, yeah. Number 100, learn where to draw the line, but do it gracefully. Yes, that's, I like that one. Number 101, remain innocent, but not ignorant. Okay. Number 101, make your home comfortable when he calls. Large ashtrays comfortable chairs. I don't know what we don't, like I said, smoking now. Number 103, learn to play poker. Hmm. I sort of know how to play poker. I have no desire to though. Number 104, if he's rich, tell him you like his money. The honesty will intrigue him. Will it? He may think you're a gold digger. Ooh, I like it that you have so much money, Mr. Man. What? Number 105, never let him believe your career is more important to you than marriage. Ooh. That is some sticky, sticky situation right there. Career, marriage, hot button topic. Number 106, buy him an amusing or particularly appropriate present every once in a while, but don't make it too expensive. Okay. Number 107, clip and mail him a funny cartoon that means something to both of you. Okay, that's not bad. Number 108, don't tell dirty stories. What? No. Bill loves it when I say stuff like that. Get out of here. 109, stop being a mama's girl. Don't let him think he'll have in-law trouble, even if you know he will. Number 110, point out to him that the death rate of single men is twice that of married men. Not according to the true crime stories I read, right? <laughs> All right. So the last section is wild ideas. Anything goes. Good Lord. What are, whoo, let's get wild and crazy now, right? Number 111, go to Yale. The fuck? What? Number 112, get a hunting license. Ladies, only if you want to learn to hunt. Number 113, if your mother is fat, tell him you take after your father. If he's fat too, tell him you're adopted. Shut up! Do not do that! What? Number 114, stow away on a battleship. I've, I've lost the plot here. Oh, here... <laughs> rent a billboard and post your picture and telephone number on it. Get the actual fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? Do you know what you would be inviting? Post, rent a billboard, first of all, hell of a lot of money. 
put your picture and telephone number on it. Are you insane? I think that is the most insane one that I've read. What? Number 116, paint your... <laughs> no! Paint your name and number on the roof of your house and say, give me a buzz, pilots. <laughs> they left the most ridiculous, cuckoo, crazy pants, bananas ideas for last. Number 117, start a whispering campaign on how sought after you are. Kind of like the telephone game. What? Number 118, sink at a fashionable beach at high noon. What does that even mean? What did I just read? Sink at a fashionable beach at high noon. Sink into what? What? Oh, you mean in the water? Like act like you're drowning? No, don't do that. 119, ride the airport bus back and forth from the airport. What, hoping to meet people? Jesus. Now here's a good one. Number 120, bribe the Ferris wheel operator to get you stuck on the top of a Ferris wheel. That terrifies me because I'm, I'm not too keen on heights, but that would be a good way to be stuck with the person, right? <laughs> I can't! 121, ladies, are we Wonder Woman now? Stand on a busy street corner with a lasso. This has just gone off the rails. <laughs> Number 122, carry a camera and ask strange handsome men if they would mind snapping your picture. Jesus fucking Christ. Number 123, get ready. Ask your mother to take in male boarders. What? No. What? You're like inviting. You don't know these people. You could be inviting serial killers into your home. Ask your mother to take in male boarders. Get what? <laughs> 124. Make and sell toupees. How the actual fuck would you even do that? Bald men are easy catches. I feel like bald men would take great offense to that. Make and sell toupees. Bill is bald. He he has hair around here, but he shaves it. He would never wear a fucking toupee. Are you crazy? 125, advertise for male co-owner of a boat. Okay, you have a boat, and you put in the paper, I'm looking for a co-owner, but it has to be male. Jesus. Number 127, carry a tow chain in the trunk of your automobile. Why? What? Oh, so maybe if you see somebody broken down, you could help tow their car? Number 128, and we're almost at the end. We only got this one and one more. Let it be known in your office that you have a button box. <laughs> I have a button box. That you have a button box and will sew on bachelor's loose buttons. <laughs> and then the 129 says don't marry him if he has too many loose buttons. Meaning he's been getting around. He's been getting around to other women's button boxes. Are we kidding with this? Oh my God, that was hilarious. I cannot. Let me know down below what was your favorite one. I like the wild ones. Oh, those were good. Those were good. I, I fucking can't with those. I cannot. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Friday or whenever you watch this. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.